Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to teach your horse to behave on the ground. Ground manners are essentially any behavior that your horse demonstrates on the ground. If they can behave well, then they have good ground manners, but if they behave bad and they're constantly getting in your space, pushing you and taking advantage of you, then those are some bad ground manners. All right, and before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel and like this video for more weekly horse videos. So the first point we're going to cover for groundwork is probably the most important point and it's also the foundation of horse training. It's teaching your horse to respect your personal space. So if you have a horse that's constantly pushing you with their shoulder, being pushy, maybe trying to walk ahead of you when you're leading them, or just maybe crowding you and you feel like they're a little too close to you, then this exercise will help you. So the exercise you're going to want to start doing to teach your horse to respect your space is simply just moving their shoulders over. So your goal is to see their front leg cross one in front of the other. A horse will move in the direction that their shoulders are pointing. So if your horse's shoulders are pointing to you, that's when they get pushy because that's when they start running into you and getting in your space. So today we're just going to work on getting the horse to move their shoulders away from you. So if your horse has never been taught this, it can be a little confusing for them in the beginning. So a very simple and easy way to start teaching them to move their legs away from you is simply taking your hand and putting it up to their eye and I kind of make a pushing motion and I use my lunge rip and see how they stepped away. And so your hand is kind of acting like a wall that's coming to your horse and see how he's stepping away when I step towards him. So that's the idea. He's learning that he needs to move out of my space. Good. So that's a really simple and easy thing you can start with and as your horse starts to understand the concept of moving their shoulders over, you can move on to a little bit more advanced exercise. So once the horse starts to understand moving their shoulders over, you can incorporate it into some other groundwork techniques. So let's say you're lunging your horse or you just want them to go out in a circle around you. The way you're going to move them out is by same concept. You know, I have my hand up to his face and he moves his front end away. So once your horse really starts to understand the concept, you can start working with them a little farther away and kind of pushing your personal space out. So right now, um, I'm with Tucker, so my personal space is from here to his nose about. And what I'm going to do is I can just move his shoulders by standing on the side I want him to move away from. So if I want him to move to the left, I'm going to stand on the right. If I want him to move to the right, I'm going to stand on the left. And all I can do is take my crop, kind of wiggle it out his shoulder, and see how he steps right over. So that's just a great thing to teach your horse, to tell your horse that you're the one setting where your personal space starts and ends, not them. So another thing that this can help with is when you're lunging your horse, this can help with them changing direction. So a lot of people can have difficulty trying to get their horse to change direction in the beginning, but once you can move and control the horse's shoulders, it gets a lot easier. Good. So the next point we're going to cover in terms of ground manner is leading your horse. So a lot of horses are actually really bad about being led. Either they're trying to push past their owner or the owner's having to drag them behind them. So it's really important that you teach your horse to walk up with you and listen to your body language for when they should move and go. That means that they're paying attention to you and they're listening to you rather than paying attention to something else. The ideal place for your horse to be when you're leading them is to have their head parallel with your elbow. And so, ideally you can just lead your horse on a loose lead and they'll stop when you stop and go when you go. But to teach them that, I'm going to show you exactly what to do. So the first thing we'll cover is if your horse is too pushy when being led. So Tucker's not a pushy guy, but just for the sake of the video, we'll use him for an example and I'll demonstrate what you're supposed to do. But in reality, if your horse is being pushy when you're leading them and they're trying to get ahead of you, they're not respecting your personal space. So you need to teach your horse that your personal space expands anywhere ahead of you. The way you do that is if the horse gets ahead of you, you immediately stop and make them back out of your space. And eventually they're going to learn that that space is yours, not theirs. So let's say Tucker's getting pushy and I'll just ask him to walk ahead so you can see. So what I'm doing, I'm immediately going to stop and see how he walks ahead of me. Back him up, out of my space, then I'm just going to let him stand there and think for a second, and then we'll continue. 
All right, let's say he gets pushy again. I'm gonna stop. See how he tries to walk ahead of me? Back him up. Let him stand there. Then we'll continue. <laughs> and it's basically repetition and consistency. If your horse is doing this, you wanna make sure anytime they start to get ahead of you, you make them stop and back up. Okay, so let's talk about a horse that drags behind you when you're leading them. In actuality, this horse isn't really paying attention to you or the pressure that you're applying to them. So the audio from our video was really messed up due to wind, so I'm just gonna walk you guys through this with a voiceover. So if you have a lazy horse that likes to drag behind you, you can use a lunge whip when you're leading them to encourage them to stay up beside you. And anytime they start dragging behind, just encourage them with that whip. And then another exercise you can do is speeding up and slowing down your speed. And this will just help them pay attention and focus in and really start to understand what they're supposed to be doing. So if you have a horse that drags behind you, another thing that will be helpful to teach them is if you're just standing here like I am with Tucker, I'm just gonna apply pressure in a forward motion and have him step towards that pressure. And that way he's learning that if pressure is applied to the lead rope, he needs to move forward. So that will correlate with leading your horse. When I apply pressure, he's supposed to move up beside me. Our next point is about those horses that love to try and put their head down and graze when you're leading them. And so this is really disrespectful behavior. It shows that your horse is paying more attention to the grass than to you. So what I'm gonna do is when my horse goes to put their head down and eat, I am immediately gonna send them out in a circle around me and I'm gonna make them do a nice hard working trot because a trot is the hardest gait for a horse. And I'm just gonna do this for a few minutes. What I'm trying to teach the horse is if they try to put their head down and graze, that's gonna be a lot more work for them compared to just leading next to me correctly. And so you can just do this anytime your horse tries to eat grass. Personally, what I, if I had a horse that struggled with this, I would dedicate time to solving this problem. I'd just go out for 30 minutes, uh, walk them through a field of grass, and anytime they tried to eat, I would just lunge them around me and make sure I correct that behavior. Another disrespectful behavior that a horse may demonstrate on the ground is sticking their head up when you're trying to put their bridle on, and this is just them trying to escape pressure that you're applying to them when you try to put the bridle on. So what I like to teach my horses is to lower their head just with the very lightest pressure. And I do this by applying downward pressure on the lead rope. And I just hold that pressure until they dip their nose even an inch towards the ground or even, you know, half an inch towards the ground. As soon as that they make that downward motion, I'm going to release the pressure so they learn that that's what I'm asking for. And as you continue to do this, you can ask them to hold their head down longer and you can ask them to stretch their head down closer to the ground. And you can also teach them this by putting your hand on top of their pole right behind their ears and just lightly pushing down on top of their head. If your horse doesn't like this, you can do this as you're pulling down on the lead rope just so they get the concept. But ideally you teach your horse both ways because sometimes you're not gonna have a lead rope to ask your horse to put its head down and you're gonna need to put your hand on top of their head. So our next point is dealing with horses that show aggressiveness at feeding time. So if you have a horse that you feed and if you walk towards them, they pin their ears back and lunge at you, that is not safe and it's not good and your horse shouldn't be doing that. If you watch horses in the wild, the alpha horse can always get the other horses to move away from the food. So if your horse can get you to move away from its food, that means that your horse pretty much thinks that they're the alpha in the relationship. So to correct that, um, we're gonna do some groundwork. We're gonna use the point that we learned about teaching your horse to respect your space and we're gonna integrate that into this session. How I do this is I start with just an empty food bin and I'll let my horse go over and smell it so they can get this concept of feeding time and thinking that, oh, they may be getting food. But then I'm going to move my horse away using groundwork. So I'll just encourage them to go out in a circle around me and I'm the one moving their feet. So in the wild, the alpha horse controls the other horse's movements. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm telling my horse to move away from the food bucket when I want them to, but then I'm also gonna allow them to move back to the food bucket when I decide the time is right. And I do this with an empty food bucket to begin with just because I don't want the stress and the pressure of having real grain where the horse may feel obligated to act out. I'll start with the empty food bucket first just so the horse gets the concept of what I'm telling them and then I'll add grain to the bucket once they seem like they understand. 
When you're doing this step, it's just very important that you remain assertive and confident and not back down to your horse. If it's something that you really are timid and afraid about, always get another trainer or go to a professional to help you out and they can walk you through these steps and help you correct this behavior. In this point, we're going to cover horses that get a little iffy about going in tight spaces. This is whether you have a horse that has a hard time getting on a trailer or maybe they start to freak out in their stall because they're feeling claustrophobic. And most of these horses are actually demonstrating fear. Their horses are like claustrophobic animals and if they get in tight spaces and they haven't been in that situation before, they can get a little antsy and nervous. Many of these horses will be nervous about walking through narrow gateways or stall doors. So where I'm going to start is actually by getting my horse to walk in and out of the stall multiple times just so they can start walking through it comfortably, not speeding up. They're paying attention to me. They stop when I ask them to stop. They go when I ask them to go. So before we do this exercise, you're just going to want to make sure that your horse knows your cues for if you put pressure on the lead rope to walk forward and when to stop. So this is a problem that Tucker has actually had previously. We've worked through it, but that's why I think he's the best horse to demonstrate this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ask him to walk in and out of the stall. I'm asking him to turn. And I'll just begin by doing this. In the beginning, your horse may start to try and run in and out of the stall, in and out of the stall, walk quickly through the gap and all of that. Horses learn by repetition, so you, the more you do this, the likely it is they're going to get more comfortable with walking through that narrow gateway. And so, once they do that, and they get good at that, I can add some other things to this. So now when he walks through, I'll ask him to come out, to come to the door, but then I'm not going to let him, I'm going to just make him stand. And then you can start really getting them to pay attention to you rather than what they're feeling. So then I can ask him to take one step out, good boy. And then the other step. Or I can ask him to back up through it. And just adding these things so the stall door in the opening now becomes kind of a game rather than something they are to be afraid of. So if you have a horse that's nervous about getting on a horse trailer, walking through a stall door is actually a perfect place to start. Believe it or not, but these things correlate together. So the more narrow areas you can find your horse to work through, the easier it may be for them to walk up on the trailer. So once your horse starts to get a little bit more confident with going through tight places, you can set up some new obstacles for them. So now I've taken the barn doors and I've shut them to be a little bit tighter and I'm just going to do the same thing where I'll encourage him to walk through and then I'll have him turn around and come out. And so this kind of mimics walking through a trailer and walking up into a narrow space. If you have any other questions or um, situations with ground manners, comment below and let us know and maybe we'll do a video on it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel for more weekly horse videos.